Today, lesson 2B, day number two of solving equations with variables on both sides <coughs> of the equation. And so, a little bit of background knowledge of what happened in day number one. We started the process of solving equations with variables on both sides. And remember, what we're trying to do really is we're trying to isolate the variable on one side of the equation, whether it be on the right hand side, like in this equation or like on the left hand side as in this equation right here. It does not matter which side you isolate the variable on as long as you isolate on one side. And when we did this very first problem, we saw that we got a solution of x equals 13. And what that means is that this equation has one and only one solution. And that solution, once again, happens to be um, x equals 13. But sometimes that is not the case. So uh, reiterating what I talked about in the last lesson, uh, the idea behind solving any equation is to try and find the numeric value of the variable that creates a true statement. And that numeric value is the solution right now with your shoulder partner. Solve that equation. So we're trying to figure out the value of the variable that will create a true statement. So what value for the variable will create a true statement? Anything because both sides have the same property on the right side, mm -hmm. there will both be 9x minus 15, so okay. it should be substituted for an instant number right. of solutions. Right, right, exactly. And that's what's different about this equation. When we go to solve it, um, we're going to end up with equivalent expressions on each side of the equal sign. So before I even go through that problem, the standard, the eighth grade standard for solving equations with variables on both sides goes something like this. Uh, you're supposed to give examples of linear equations in one variable with one solution, which was what that very first one was, infinitely many solutions, or as we've seen before, no solutions. And we're supposed to show how we can get different forms or so show which of these possibilities is the case by successfully transforming the given equation into simpler forms until an equivalent equation of the form x equals a or a equals a or a equals b results. And where, that's where a and b are numbers and they happen to be different numbers. So getting back to this one, if I use the distributive property, and as we already talked about, uh, any value for x will make a true statement, and we say that that is infinitely many solutions. And here's how that works. We use the distributive property. Once we see that we have equivalent expressions, which we've been dealing with equivalent expressions for a long time, once we see that we have that, we should be able to conclude that we have infinitely many solutions. But if we kept solving, by, for example, subtracting 9x from both sides. So, for example, if I subtracted 9x here and subtracted 9x here, in some respects, uh, we end up with something that looks like this. 0x minus 15 equals negative 15. And if we have 0x, it's really not there. And so we end up with some value equal to itself. That's another indication that if we end up with something in the form a equals a, which is what we have, negative 15 equals negative 15, uh, we will have infinitely many solutions. And we need to make sure that we state that correctly. And so the correct solution to this is infinitely many solutions. And some of you probably should write that down, OK? And another way of looking at it is this. If the variables are eliminated, as I already showed you when we subtracted 9x from both sides, and you end with a true statement, which negative 15 is equal to negative 15 last time I checked, and if you think about that, that is true, uh, there will be infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to stop for a second because I know you've got some blank areas that you're supposed to be filling in there. Equations that end in the form A equals A will always have infinitely many solutions. So I've kind of given you two different ways of, of looking at, at that. The second way is if variables are eliminated and you end with a true statement, there will be infinitely many solutions. Okay? 
All right, so let's go to this one. Solve that one with your shoulder partner. Okay, so the same thing is uh, different about this one as opposed to the other one here. And what we have concluded is that there is not a value that we can substitute in for x that will create a true statement. And when that happens, we say that the solution is no solution. And this is not the first time we've run into this idea of no solution. So if I go through and solve, I use the distributive property. And then uh, if you kept solving and subtracted 9x from both sides, you would end up with this. But if we have 0x, it's really not there. And so we end up with negative 14 equals negative 15. Well, last time I checked, that was not a true statement. And so one way of looking at it, and here's where we, you're, you have some areas in your notes where you're supposed to be filling things in. Uh, equations that end in the form A equals B, where A and B are different numbers, like this one, uh, we will always have no solution. Equations that end in the form A equals B, where A and B are different numbers, we will always have no solution. And another way of looking at this, like we looked at in the previous problem, is this. In other words, if the variables are eliminated, like what just happened, and you end up with a false statement, and I did hear some of you say that when you were shoulder partnering, uh, there will be no solution. So let me kind of summarize this. If the variables are eliminated, you will either have no solution or infinitely many solutions. From there, it's all whether it depends on whether you have a true statement or a false statement. A true statement will lead you to the conclusion that you have infinitely many solutions, and if you end with a false statement, you will end up with no solution. Okay? All right. Let's go to number one. Solve the equation. If there is one solution, state what the solution is. Otherwise, state if there are infinitely many solutions or no solution. And it should be obvious to you that you're going to have to combine some like terms. Um, in the last lesson, we did have some where we had to use the distributive property or combine like terms. So that should not be a big deal. Just solve it. All right, so what is the solution here? What is it? It's no solution. Uh, what, what led you, Drew, to that conclusion that it was no solution? Yeah. And subtracted the 10 and then the 10 y's. 10 y's and then negative 8 and negative 6 and the last two. Okay. So that's what that lit. Okay. Good. 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 Now, what does that mean though? What does it mean no solution? What does that mean in this problem, Caleb? The false statement. Well, that's not what it means. The false statement helped you like, let me get caught up here. Let me combine like terms, and um, notice that I am writing the justification here. Then I subtracted 10y from both sides, which is the subtraction property of equality. And so this is, where, uh, this is where Drew was right here. He said it was a false statement. Yes, that leads you to one, that's one way of leading you to the fact that it is no solution. But what does that mean? Quickly, turn to your shoulder partner. What does that mean that the solution is no solution? Lucas, what does it mean? No solution. No solution basically means that it can't be solved. Okay, it can't be solved. There is not a value that you can substitute in for y and get a true statement. No matter what you substitute in, you will never get a true statement. Remember, the false statement is just a one way of helping you determine that it was no solution after the variables we're canceled out, and uh, we do notice that it is of the form A equals B, like the eighth grade standard says. All right, I would like you to now do number two and number three, and then we'll shoulder partner, and then we'll, I'll come back to you in a couple minutes. All right, number two, I would combine like terms, which leaves me with this. You can see at this point we have one expression equal to itself. At that point, right there, you should realize it's going to be infinitely many solutions. But if you didn't, you could add... 3k to both sides, which is the addition property of equality. And now you end up with 4 equals 4. That's of the form a equals a. Or it's a true statement 
which lead, should lead you to the conclusion that there are infinitely many solutions. In other words, there are an infinite number of numbers that you could substitute in for k and get a true statement. Lots and lots of answers. Number three, we would need to use the distributive property on the right-hand side, which leaves us with this, and then probably combine like terms, which leaves us with this. And now, look. The only way, and I said this earlier, and if you don't believe me, go back and listen to the screencast when you get home. Uh, I made this statement earlier. I said the only way that you can end up with a solution of no solution or infinitely many solutions would be if the variables cancel out. Are the variables canceling out, yes or no? no. On the right-hand side, yes. Not on the left-hand side. So it can't be no solution or infinite solutions. What is the solution? x equals 0. That is the only solution, x equals 0. A value of 0 for x, that is the only value that will create a true statement uh, within the original equation. So don't make that mistake. If the variables don't cancel, there is a solution. Okay? There is a solution. All right, continuing on. Uh, these five problems, you're going to go through them with your shoulder partner and not just determine the number of solutions, but talk about why. So you're either going to answer these no solution, infinitely many solutions, or one solution. Because really, with all of these linear equations, that's all there can be. So either one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. That's how you're going to answer them. You don't have to solve them. OK, you've got about a minute and a half to two minutes with your shoulder partner. Go. Number four, after you use the distributive property, you should recognize that you have one expression equal to itself. That's an indication that we have infinitely many solutions. Uh, number five, if you were to go on and attempt to solve, the variables will not be, uh, you will still have variables. In other words, they're not going to cancel out. So that means there has to be one solution. Number six um, should be no solution. If you subtract a 5y from both sides, you end up with negative 2 equals 0. That is a false statement. Number seven, you probably should have tried to split this up where we've talked about these ideas before. This splits up into this, which gives us x minus 4. So we're basically substituting that in right there. And I'm wondering if I may have a typo here since those are so close. I'm not sure. I guess we're going to find out. Uh, no, no typo. It's no solution. Because we end up with negative 4 equals positive 4. And then we've got a little bit of work to do in number 8. Use the distributive property, combine like terms. But you will end up with one expression equal to itself, which is, tells you that it should be infinitely uh, many solutions. So now let's go to number 9, which has five parts. And what you're trying to do is you are trying to figure out whether the first part, if you uh, think of this being right here, in other words, 24w oops, minus 72, if that will lead you to one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions, pick which one it is, whether it's A, B, or C. By the way, which one is it? A, B, or C? It is C. Okay, so you just write C right there. And then go ahead and do the other ones and work on those with your shoulder partner, please. Okay, we already talked about uh, the first one, which is infinitely many solutions. Uh, the second one, if you use the distributive property, you will end up with, once again, uh, infinitely many solutions. Uh, number three. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we'd have to use the distributive property and then combine like terms, and we would end up with uh, no solution because we end up with a false statement if we solved it all the way down. Uh, part four would be one solution. The variables will not cancel out. Number five, you'll have to combine like terms to see, but you should end up with no solution there. Any questions on number nine? All right, so we have two problems left. Number 10 and number 11, these are identical to the two word problems that we did um, in the last lesson, except I changed the numbers. 
And it leads us into what we have talked about today as far as our main theme. So I would like you, with your shoulder partner, to set up an equation and solve and then answer both number 10 and 11, and I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. Both, do, both number 10 and number 11. Claire, you can buy a skateboard for $60 from a friend and rent the safety equipment for $5 per hour, or you can rent all the items you need for $5 per hour. For how many hours will the cost be the same? Um, there will be no point where they cost the same. Exactly. Because when you set up your equation, which looks something like this, and solve, you end up with no solution. Because the variable's canceled, you end up with a false statement, which leads you to no solution. But no solution does not answer the question, one possible answer might be this, the cost will never be the same. Then we have number 11. Similar to a problem we did uh, last lesson, we set up our equation and then we answer the question. What's the answer, or what's one possible answer to this question? Three, Three? okay. That wasn't what I was looking for, but... They'll, they'll always be the same, right? So Caleb gave us three. Somebody else could have given us five. Somebody else could have given pie. us a billion. So what would you say, pi? Pie. Pie. Yeah, okay, pi. <laughs> I don't know that there's such a thing as pie, pie bottles, but yeah. We'd have a fractional part of a bottle. All right, so let me, let me finish this up. So we end up with the variables canceling, and we end up with a true statement which leads us to the conclusion that there will be infinitely many solutions, but we need to answer the question. So the cost will always be the same, no matter, no matter the number of bottles that we have here. All right, we are finished for today.